This is how Icelanders generate virtually all of their electricity with hydro and geothermal power, both providing exceptionally clean energy. But these renewable resources aren't enough to eliminate the country's carbon emissions. The industries that are plugging into our renewable uh, resources are mainly, uh, is mainly aluminum smelter, which is uh, quite carbon emitting. So uh, I think that, uh, and we are actually quite few here, so if you would measure it per capita, you would have rather high carbon emissions right. in, in Iceland. And that carbon emission level is part of the reason for this research, a twist on the more traditional carbon emission storage projects. Iceland's international carb fix program aims to pull CO2 out of the air and put it inside rock. We are going to take the CO2 from the steam and dissolve it in water and inject it into basaltic bedrock where it will react with minerals in the basaltic rock mm -hmm. and form a solid uh, carbonates. Mm -hmm. So the CO2 will be stable for thousands of years in the bedrock. The ocean floor covers about 70% of the Earth's surface. All the ocean ridges are made of basalts, and Iceland is the largest part of the ocean ridges that are above sea level. If we're going to use this method to use fully dissolve the carbon dioxide of the water, if we do it in seawater, if we do it on the ocean floor, there's endless supply of water. So there's no limit to the water we have. No, but there is a limit on the scope of Iceland's carb fix research, so far confined to the lab only. And scientists say the comfort of this controlled atmosphere is far from the challenges a true field test would present. We are actually planning to start injecting CO2 dissolved in water early 2010. That's actually the first step to prove that the theory does work in the field. We know it works in, in the lab, but we are taking it out into the field in scale one by one. We've been doing experiments in the lab and then we been taking the experiments and putting them into computer models and then we try to predict what's going to happen once the carbon dioxide gets into the ground. But in the end you really have to kind of jump. You don't know what's going to happen in details until you really do it. Therefore we have to start by a small pilot study where we do the actual injection on a small scale and then we can always scale it up to industrial scale if the experiment is successful. This is what Gies Lassen refers to as a small pilot a carb fix testing program involving a sprawling energy complex, Reykjavik Energy's Headless Ada facility, about 20 minutes outside of Iceland's capital city. The company, a partner in the carb fix project, proudly calls this the newest and most modern geothermal power plant in the world. An emphasis there on modern. That's because Headless Ada is now home to the initial carb fix field testing. Now, one obvious question is, why locate a carbon storage project on the site of a geothermal plant which produces zero carbon emissions? The answer lies deep underground in these volcanic fields, where the carbon emissions occur naturally. I mean, the basal de Gros at the sites are for, uh, is the ideal rock type for this. It is rich in elements like calcium, magnesium and iron that can combine with carbon dioxide to form the solid calcium carbonate. We have the basaltic rock and also that, well, the CO2 is origin originated from the cooling magma under the volcano. So actually we are, uh, and we have seen these reactions taking place uh, in the nature. So the carb fix method is to imitate what nature is actually doing already in the geothermal systems. And if it can mineralize CO2, carb fix would solve a major carbon storage problem. CO2 sequestered underground, that is structural containment as it's known, can inevitably leak, posing a potential health threat to anyone nearby. That is not a risk with CO2 stored as rock. And another benefit, according to Sigurd Daughter, one essential ingredient to the process is abundant. She says more than 10% of the Earth's crust is basaltic, and there are substantial basalt fields in the U.S., Siberia, and India. No doubt exporting the carb fix process would be excellent business for the country, but Iceland scientists tell me the ability to store carbon, that environmental boon, that will be their true measure of success. My hope is that, that uh, we, this is going to be a success and we are going to be able to, to, to build this setup and use it because uh, how we are thinking about this, this is no rocket science. 
So if we were if we are able to build a relatively cheap uh, and and not so complicated setup, then I would be happy.